In this step, let's look at another important pattern, the intercepting filter. Intercepting filter is a pattern which is directly implemented as part of Java. So this is directly a concept which is already part of the Java EE. It's called filter. Let's take an example. In any application, you'd only want authenticated users to come in. A typical application has hundreds of controllers. A large application I'm talking about. Before each of these controllers, I have to check whether the user is really authenticated. One of the ways to do that would be in every controller check, okay, is this user authenticated? Use, is this user authenticated? 100 times. The other option is to intercept the request to these controllers and in between write a filter to check if the user is authenticated. So just like just before the request goes to the controller, we kind of go in between. We say, I would want to run this filter first. So the filter would check if the user is authenticated and if he's not authenticated, it would redirect him back to the user page. Otherwise, it would send him to the appropriate page. Filters are extensively used in all Java web applications. Struts2 framework is completely based on intercepting filters. Spring security is actually implemented as a filter. Let's look at examples. This is the example from our Spring MVC step-by-step -step repository where in the web.xml we are configuring a filter. This is the Spring security filter. What we are saying is every request should go, I mean should be intercepted by this particular filter. So any request to any of the servlets in here would first go to the Spring security and Spring security would check if the user is authenticated and only then he will the Spring Security will allow the user to go to the appropriate page. This is a very good example of a filter. In our Java servlets and JSP application, we created an explicit web filter to do that. Java EE from Java EE6 has this annotation called web filter. You don't really need to put anything in the web.xml. All that you need to do is use this annotation and say which patterns you want to inter intercept. So here I'm saying I want to intercept any request which has a dot do. And I'm implementing a do filter method which would check if there's a specific attribute. So when there's a user logged in, we put a specific attribute into the session. So we check if that user, if that attribute is there. If that attribute is not there, what we would do is we would send the user back to the login page. So if in the session, the user details are not present, then we would ask him to log in again. I mean, this is a very, very, very trivial implementation and does not really fit real world needs, but it kind of shows the logic which is implemented. You check if the user is authenticated, that's here. So if the user is already logged in, then you would send him to the appropriate page and else you would redirect him to the login page. This is kind of the stuff you would do in a authentication filter everywhere. The other thing you can see here is this is from our struts step-by-step -step repository. The struts also is implemented as a filter. So actually the struts framework, the first thing you would need to do is to put a filter in. So we are seeing the struts filter is the first one. So actually the struts framework is completely based on filters. So if you want to add any functionality in the struts framework, you would create something called an interceptor, which is really, really simple. Uh, very similar to a, a filter. Intercepting filter is kind of a very, very frequently used web layer pattern. Typically, we use this to pre-process and redirect a request. Thanks for joining more than a million students who are learning from us. At In 28 Minutes, we defined a learning roadmap for Java and front-end developers. We created more than 25 courses covering all the topics that you are seeing on the screen. There are four things you can do to make best use of these courses. Number one is Udemy. You'll find a link in the description of the video to our Udemy profile. We are teaching a lot of courses on Udemy and most of them are free. Number two, visit our website www.in28minutes.com. You'd find tons of information including how you can register for our trainings and the link to Udemy and our GitHub code as well. Number three, visit our GitHub repository. With more than 20 repositories covering varied examples, 
it's a comprehensive source of information and code. Last but not the least, you'll find a set of discount codes for all our Udemy courses in the description as well. Feel free to use them. Good luck from the team here at In28 Minutes, your destination for high quality step-by-step -step courses.